One of the most important pieces of equipment in natural gas dehydration is the absorber tower. An absorber tower is where triethylene glycol absorbs the water entrained in natural gas and carries it out of the absorber. Inside the tower, manufacturers install one of three different types of internal designs. Structured packing, random packing, or trays to carry out this process of absorption. In this video, we'll cover the three different designs, how they work, and the advantage of each option. In all three designs, the basic motion of the glycol and natural gas are similar. Glycol comes into the top of the tower and flows down. Natural gas comes in from the bottom and flows up. The glycol becomes saturated as it absorbs water vapor in the natural gas, making it dry. The major difference is how they come into contact with each other, either through packing or trays with bubble caps. First, let's talk about what packing is. Packed towers include packing, which comes in a variety of forms and materials. It provides a surface area where contact and absorption can occur. The packing allows for efficient absorption process because of the greater contact area. Packing materials need enough room for the liquid to flow through and not cause a pressure drop. At the same time, it must also allow for the proper amount of contact between the liquid and gas. The two types of packing designs are structured and random. Structured packing uses large, fixed packing structures which channel liquids into specific shapes. This material contains holes, grooves, and corrugations and other textured elements that allow for increased surface area. Each layer of the structured packing in the absorber extends the full diameter of the tower and is rotated 90 degrees from the previous one. The diameter of the packing can be almost any practical size. Here are the basics of how structured packing dehydrates natural gas. The glycol is distributed evenly at the top of the tower and flows down through the structured packing, coating the surface as it moves. Depending on the size of the tower, a redistribution tray may be used to evenly redistribute the glycol across the packing again. This prevents the glycol from channeling down only one side of the absorber. The natural gas enters the tower towards the bottom and travels upward contacting the glycol as it makes its way down, which absorbs the water from the gas. In an absorber with random packing, the tower is filled with stainless steel pawl rings or ceramic saddles. This random packing fills the tower and randomly falls into place. The dry glycol entering the top of the tower must flow over, around, and beside all of the packing, which distributes the glycol evenly through the tower. The gas enters towards the bottom of the tower and travels upward, contacting the glycol as it makes its way down, which absorbs the water from the gas. If the packing needs to be taller than 10 feet to meet the water removal needs, a redistribution tray can be used to collect the glycol and redistribute it evenly through the tower to avoid channeling. Random packing is less expensive and easier to put in and take out than structured packing. Both random and structured packed towers have a lower pressure drop and are better at handling foaming and corrosive liquids than trade towers. The third and most common type of absorber tower is a tray design with bubble caps. In this design, horizontal metal trays are stacked and spaced every 24 inches in the tower. Dry glycol enters the tower at the top and pours over the bubble caps. The gas moves up from under them and seeps through the holes in the caps. A level of glycol is held on each tray by a weir before it travels through a downcomer to the next tray. With each tray, the glycol absorbs more water vapor from the gas. When the glycol exits the bottom of the tower, it is saturated with water and referred to as wet glycol. The gas traveling upward becomes drier after each tray as the water vapors are absorbed by the glycol. Tray towers offer better predictability than packed towers and are better at handling lower liquid rates and solids. Turndown ratio of an absorber is the operating range of the vessel as a ratio of maximum flow rate to the minimum capacity. For example, if a tower is rated at a maximum of 10 million cubic feet per day and a minimum of 2 million cubic feet per day, the turndown ratio is 5 to 1. With structured packing, the average turndown ratio is virtually unlimited. Changes in production over time will not impact the absorber size requirements. 
As long as the glycol is fully coating the packing surface, the gas flow rate can be very low, even to turndown ratios of 20 to 1. The average turndown ratio for random packing can vary with the shape of the packing, material used, and the size of the absorber, but typically is a 6 to 1 ratio. In a trade tower with bubble caps, the average turndown ratio is 6 to 1, but can be up to 10 to 1, depending on the tray and bubble cap design. The degrees of depression, or the amount of water removed per foot of packing height, is used to determine the most efficient and correct height requirements for an absorber in order to remove enough water from the natural gas flow stream. Structured packing can range from 6 to 9 degrees of depression per foot of packing height, while random packing has approximately 6 degrees of depression per foot. Tray towers can achieve approximately 10 to 12 degrees of depression per tray. For example, if you're starting at 110 degrees gas temperature and 1000 psi absorber pressure, that gives you 90 pounds of water. If you need to be at or under 7 pounds of water, you would need 65 degrees of total depression through the tower. On a tray tower, that would translate to at least 7 trays. A structured packed tower can be any practical diameter. Random packed towers have a maximum of 20 inch diameters. Any larger diameter would inhibit the even distribution of glycol across the packing. A trade tower can range anywhere from 12 to 96 inches in diameter. Absorber capacity is primarily determined by the gas volume through the tower. Larger volumes of gas will need larger towers, therefore structured or tray designs are the two options. In a trade tower, too great a gas velocity will interrupt the glycol flow pattern and break the liquid seals at the points where the tray downcomers meet the trays. This results in glycol being swept out of the tower with the gas. Because of the design of the structured packing, gas velocities can be higher than in trade towers because the glycol will not be swept out of the tower by high gas velocities. To learn more, check out our expanding YouTube playlist about natural gas dehydration and equipment. To speak with an expert about your DeHi system challenges, contact your local Kimray store or authorized distributor. A redistribution tray may be used to evenly redistribution. <laughs> 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 <laughs>